Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm going to start to put together a bunch of these video abstracts um, to talk a little bit about my posts, some of the posts that are a little bit longer and try and explain what I'm talking about in a short amount of time. So if it gets to be a bit too long, um, you can watch the video and think more about it. So the, the first post I want to talk about is one that I put together called uh, Possible Cultural and Technological Fut Futures of Digital Scholarship. And, and what I'm getting at is uh, some of my thinking recently about uh, the future of publishing, future of scholarship, and also some of the work I've been doing in, in IndieWeb and working with IndieWeb philo philosophies, if I could speak. So this post was motivated by a colleague and friend of mine, Greg McVeary. He had a post about um, microformats and, and canonical links and citations and um, you know, he had a lot of different points going on, but I think one of the key components that he had there is that um, linking to publications should be a lot easier than it currently is. Um, and that resonated and connected a lot, a lot of the dots for me, and here's why. Um, so as an overview, I've been working in some indie web philosophies lately and putting it into my two uh, websites. Uh, basically, indie web is talking about owning your own data and, and dog fooding, meaning trying out and building your own content and using it and revising over time, um, but basically creating and owning your space online. So instead of me sharing content out to Twitter or elsewhere and losing that content, I basically put it up on a website, send out a link, and then bring discussions and comments back to my uh, feed. I have lots of posts elsewhere and I'll do little video abstracts about it later. Um, but I'm baking this in and the idea is to be more in control of my digital identity and my little spaces in which I exist. Along with that, I've been involved in some recent discussions in part of my uh, professional side and some of the organizations I'm in. On one of them I serve on the publications committee and as a member of the publications committee uh, we oversee two journals. Um, and so those two journals, uh, recently we were approached by the publisher to ask what we want to do with pre-print manuscripts. Now with this we'll get a little bit in the weeds but I think it's very important that you understand what's going on. So with a pre-print manuscript, what happens is when I write a journal article, I submit it off to the publisher. Um, they accept it, put it in the system. Some people will take that manuscript or that PDF um, and put that up online. What I do is I share out the Google Doc for, with the manuscript and make it available so if people want to check it out, they can go see it and read it. After that, the manuscript is supposed to go through the system and it gets peer reviewed by others. Um, if it's accepted, which is a big if, if it's accepted, then they basically put that thing online so that other people can read it. Um, if it's not accepted, if it's rejected, the manuscript basically goes away. Most people, what they'll do is they will revise and iterate and change that manuscript and fix it and send it elsewhere to another journal so that it can be published, so you get credit for it. But the idea about pre-print manuscripts, what they're looking at is, what happens when we first submit a manuscript, when you first submit a paper to a journal? What should we do with that? So the publishers, what they want to do is they want to give that a DOI, a digital object indicator, um, and they want to give it a number and basically say, this manuscript, this paper has this digit, you know, this string of digits associated with it. So we can identify that paper that you've submitted. And if it gets published, great. We'll take that publication on the end, and when we give it a DOI, we'll give it the same DOI so you can track it throughout. Also, what they're talking about is, well, what happens if it gets rejected um, and you submit it to another journal or it's up online? Will that new journal take that paper that was submitted elsewhere? So if, that, if you submit it elsewhere, they look at it and say, hey, do you have a DOI from someplace else? And you say, yeah, of course I do, or yes, it's online. That journal may decide we don't want to accept this because it, ex it exists elsewhere online. So there's a bit of the rub. It's not really the first journal that gets it. The challenge comes in that second journal. You know, if you're not accepted the first time, the second journal might say, no, we don't want it. Like you, you're sending us stuff that was elsewhere. We don't really want your publication or your manuscript because it wasn't good enough to go elsewhere, why do you think it's good enough to go here? So there's a lot of other things at stake here, but 
one of the things they're asking is, what do we do with these manuscripts, these pre-print manuscripts that are up online, they may or may not be peer-reviewed, um, and so there's a lot of question about that. Okay, So that debate is happening um, in science, it's happening in, in the publishing industry, it's happening in our, in our different fields, um, and, and there's a lot of different sides on the story. Um, I don't think there's a right or a wrong side of the story. I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about it, but this isn't really that, uh, this video is not about that topic. So we talk about indie web, and then we talk about pre-print manuscripts. Um, and then Greg's post, what it's making me think about is, it's making me think about my writing process and what I would like to see. And so here's really what I want to get to with this post, or what I got to with this post, and hopefully I'll get to with this video, um, is thinking about the way that I write, like my use of indie web tools, and this challenge of pre-print manuscripts. What I like to see is when I write for a publication, what I'd like to see is like one consistent draft over time. Here's sort of what I mean by that. So when I normally write, I use Google Docs. Uh, I either write original drafts individually in a Google Docs so I can share it out with others, or I write drafts collaboratively in Google Docs. I don't really use Microsoft Word at all. As far as pretty much over the last like 10 years, I haven't used Microsoft Office products. So everything is in a Google Doc, for better or worse. So when I'm done, I basically download the manuscript or download a doc format from the Google Doc and upload it to whatever server for the journal or the article or the book chapters or whatever. So I, I basically download the Word doc and send it over. I do have questions about why I can't just send the Google Doc over to the editor. Um, Hybrid Pedagogy does this. Uh, a couple other places do it. I know some editors that they'll take your Word doc and they'll re-upload it to Google Docs and use it for their purposes, but we'll save that argument for another day. But I want to know why I can't. I write in Google Docs. I send the Word doc over to the publisher. I share out my Google Doc with my reading audience. I share it on my blog, and I share that so that people can see where I started. Um, if this thing is accepted, um, they can go back to it and look at it like a director's cut of my publication. But I basically share that source, that original resource online. Um, and then if it's published, I will let, I'll link back and I'll show you the published version, which is often different, and the original Google Doc. Um, what I also do is when I share it online initially, I share it out so that other people can read it and give me feedback and give me commentary. And I get a lot of that uh, and I value that. And I think that there's an opportunity to help uh, improve your work, think through details, mentor young scholars, think about your writing. But I had that original Google Doc out there. And so what I'm wondering is, is there a way for me to have one link or one identifier or, or some, you know, use those indie web philosophies, is there some way to have some sort of like mention or web mention built in to that original doc? So I start that thing off in, uh, in a Google Doc and if it's published and it goes out and it goes into um, my manuscript, into the published manuscript, a lot of manuscripts, a lot of published manuscripts exist in digital format, but there's also a lot that are those print journals. But is there a way to have that, that identifier in my Google Doc and link over to that published digital version? Okay, um, and even if it's rejected, yes, I still have that link over so that I can see my thinking over time and I can see changes over time. In addition, let's say I go back and I rewrite that. Um, so as an example, I wrote a couple years ago a chapter on hybrid and blended learning in K-12 um, with Christy Pytash, the two of us worked on it. This past year we rewrote that and that chapter came out in a revised handbook. I think there's an opportunity to say, okay, here is the old version, here's the Google Doc of the old version, here's the edits made over time, here is the, the, the first version that we published with the identifier, and then here's the second version that we published, and here is possibly a new identifier, but if not, we at least link to the original published version, and then we also talk about what changes occurred over time. Along with that trail, along with the initial draft, and then the published draft, and then maybe like a revised second edition, Along with that, there's an opportunity to link out to other resources and other materials. As an example, um, in my original Google Doc, 
some of the commentary that I get from people as I publish this thing online. I'd like to make that available in the final published version. In addition, when I send it off to get reviewed, I get feedback from reviewers and they say, yes, it's accepted, fix this, or they say, no, it's rejected, here's why. I'd like to include that in my chain of edits, in those draft, in that persistent draft that I have over time. Um, in addition, what I would also like to do is to include uh, data. I'd like to include videos of students working or um, interviews or, or YouTube clips or my researcher notes. So I see there's a way to create one identifier over time. Um, and the, the thing is that I'm already doing this. You know, I'm already doing this in my blogging and in my social network sharing. You know, I'll start up a, plot, a blog post and I can write up a blog post, I can share it out online to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, pretty much every place under the sun. I can share that out online and then using Indie Web Tools, I can see where that post has gone. And more importantly, if someone over in Facebook leaves a couple really interesting comments on that post, and then somebody on Twitter leaves a couple interesting posts on that or favorites it or whatever over on Twitter, those mentions over in Facebook and those mentions over in Twitter, those come back to my blog post and they show up on my blog post. So all of that content is there so that new people that read it, they can go back and say, oh, this is interesting. I see what these different people said in these different spaces. I want the same thing for my publications. I want the same opportunity to go to my publication. I, I want to be able to write up a book chapter or a journal article and show the, the changes over time, show the final published version, show a lot of the commentary that was given to me along the way, show my data, um, link it up to other people that cite or reference that in their works, basically create a better network of, of scholarship um, and, and this one persistent draft. Um, so that's my overview of this very too long post, um, and it's probably a much too long video as well, but I wanted to basically take a little bit of time and put together a little abstract about what my thinking was. Hopefully that uh, lends some clarity or it just further confuses you. Um, so let me know what you think. Um, give me a comment below. Uh, check out the post, read the post, leave me a commentary there. Tell me what I got right, what I got wrong. Uh, please subscribe to the video if you haven't already. Uh, give that video a like and all the other things 